and welcome to Sectors Up Close. I'm Elena Casas. Our focus today is on investing in Chinese equities, and our guest is John Stolfus, the Chief Investment Strategist at Oppenheimer Asset Management. Well, market turbulence caused by Beijing's regulatory crackdowns on its technology, education and property sectors has hit foreign investors in Chinese equities very hard. Chinese-linked American depository receipts, as tracked by the Nasdaq Golden Dragon Index, had their biggest monthly fall in July since the height of the 2008 global financial crisis. They're down over 20 percent. The index has dropped about a quarter this year, taking more more than $500 billion off its market value. One of the most high-profile victims of tensions between Washington and Beijing over Chinese companies listed in the United States was, of course, ride-sharing app Didi, which lost about $21 billion of its market value only days after its U.S. IPO, when China banned the app from signing up new users. This and other sudden regulatory changes prompted the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission at the end of last week to suspend the registration of IPOs of Chinese companies. While celebrity investor Cassie Woods' ARK Invest says it dumped shares of Alibaba, Baidu and Tencent. But, as many China watchers will argue, investors shouldn't ignore opportunities in the world's second-largest economy, which rebounded strongly from the COVID-19 pandemic. And while recent data has showed growth cooling, second-quarter GDP still managed an expansion of 7.9 per cent in the quarter, helped not only by exports, but surging consumption by a growing middle class. So, how should a foreign investor approach China? Let's ask Oppenheimer Asset Management's John Stolfus. Hi, John. Thanks for joining us. Now, yesterday, the chief executive of HSBC, Noel Quinn, said he doesn't expect to see any decline in investment appetite for China. Do you agree? Well, I I, I, I respect his opinion, but I would have to say that uh, we would differ there. From a perspective of U.S. investors, Depending upon what kind of risk uh, appetite an investor has, we have seen many investors uh, begin to reduce their uh, exposure to China. I know it, in funds that we that we manage under my group, uh, we have uh, lightened up our exposure uh, to China uh, for the near term uh, because we run relatively moderate to uh, aggressive funds. Do you think the recent aggressive policy from the Chinese government aimed at reeling in its tech firms is a permanent change or is it a policy experiment? We would think that it may very well be a policy experiment with a mandate government uh, and uh, five year plans, things like that. Uh, the the idea is always to tweak uh, the, uh, the policy from the government standpoint uh, to grow the economy or to tighten on the economy. Uh, Parallel to what we do via central banks in our countries or different administrations, but of course this under a mandated uh, a communist uh, a government. Investment banks estimate that U.S. investors alone hold a trillion dollars worth of Chinese internet and tech stocks. What would be your advice to those investors who have them? Well, once again, it really would depend upon the investor's appetite for risk. The fact that some of these funds are as off uh, as large percentages off as they are and uh, we would have to say for aggressive investors this might be an opportunity to consider uh, playing the bet thinking that China will back down the China will uh, it not necessarily change its its its, uh, its current trend but reduce the uh, the severity of it so that it would appeal more for investors on the other hand for a conservative investor, this would likely be a good opportunity to consider other emerging emerging markets that may actually gain uh, from a diversification away in the supply chain, away from one country centricity, uh, uh, as well as markets that may be more amenable to foreign investors. As you said, the impact for foreign investors depends very much on the investment vehicle. So I'm just going to show our viewers examples of four popular ETFs and their very different performance profiles so far this year. Technology investments have done worse with investors who, than investors who stuck with the blue chip CSI 300, for example. So mm-hmm. how should investors approach this? Well, I, I would say when it, when, it, when it comes to selecting uh, indices or ETFs that, uh, or, or managed funds, uh, traditional open-ended funds, 
the big thing is to look what kind of diversification the, the fund has. If it's overly concentrated in, in technology, educational shares, I think you mentioned property shares, and uh, overnight uh, concerns about gaming stocks within China, uh, which are, are technology oriented, but the game player stocks, we would have to think you want to avoid over concentration uh, unless you're very aggressive and would opt up for more diversified that might have grocery stores, uh, small to mid cap stocks, uh, perhaps, but everything with its own risk. You have to know what type of investor you are, what your goals and objectives are, and consider uh, what type of uh, volatility you can sustain. Thanks so much for that. That was John Stolfis, Chief Investment Strategist at Oppenheimer Asset Management. Well, before I go, here are some of the top stories in the sector. Shares in Tencent and other Chinese gaming companies fell on Tuesday after state media called online gaming, quote, spiritual opium. Those comments raised fears that game companies could be the next target for Chinese regulators. Shares in Tencent lost 10 percent, wiping $60 billion off the company's market value. The state-run economic daily took aim at Tencent's flagship game, The Honor of Kings, saying no sport or industry should be able to destroy a generation. Tencent has since said it would introduce limits on how much time miners could spend playing the game. Alibaba Group Holdings missed analysts' estimates for first quarter revenue as its e-commerce business was hurt by rising competition from the likes of JD.com and Pinduoduo. Its results also mirrored those of Amazon in the US as easing coronavirus restrictions sent shoppers back into stores. Despite missing estimates, revenue rose 34 percent to the equivalent of $32 billion. During an earnings call with investors, CEO Daniel Zhang said the company would continue to monitor monitor ongoing regulatory changes to its business. And Wuhan City in China will test all 12 million of its citizens for coronavirus. This, of course, is the place where the pandemic started in 2019 and it's confirmed its first domestic cases of the Delta variant. Wuhan had reported no local coronavirus cases since May 2020. The outbreak is believed to have begun in the provincial capital Nanjing. And since then, numerous cities in southern China and some in the north have reported infections, prompting widespread mass testing to identify and isolate carriers. And that's your look at Chinese equities. I'm Elena Casas and this is Reuters.